Hey guys, welcome back to Quest to Manifest. Today we are going to be talking everything glow up. So as usual, as I say in almost every single episode, this was based off of something I saw on Pinterest. I saved it to one of my boards a few months ago and it's honestly kind of funny simply because of all the emojis, how brutally honest and just it's just kind of funny oh and the misspelled words um but a lot of the tips are actually really good and so i'll go through them and maybe you'll want to glow up or just add some of these fun healthy tips into your life so without further ado let's get into it the first one is drink a lot of water yes this is very important i i literally said this in my what to do and have a bad day episode or something Water is so important. In that episode, I focused it mainly on the fact that water can help you clear your mind and just make you put you in a better mood. But since this is a glow up, it's also good for everything from weight loss, if that's what you're looking for, or curbing unhealthy cravings. Um, It's really good for your skin. I know, like I've seen this for myself. Like when I, I used to, when I was younger, I used to eat pepperoni pizzas i i only eat cheese now but i used to eat pepperoni pizzas and i would always get acne the next day unless i drank um like literally like half a gallon of water and it would always work i would always wake up the next day and my skin would be fine so yeah water is really good the next one is use lip balm this is kind of a given for me i don't know how people can go around without having lip balm like my I guess because I have more prominent lips that I really notice when they're dry. So, but yeah, if you don't already, lip balm will change your life. It's just so easy and fun. Find a nice flavor, find something that feels good and use that and make sure, try to make sure that it has good ingredients. The more natural, the better. So like beeswax, that's that sort of stuff is good. But also Carmex, if your lips are like medically medical there's something medically wrong with them and they're and they are dry then carmex is good i use that sometimes but most of the time it's a little too chemically and also it is a little too thick for me the next one is to moisturize i should be better at this but i have i'm luckier that i have oilier skin not oily or greasy but i don't need to moisturize all the time like I know a lot of people do but yeah if you have super dry skin I think moisturization is a must and also if you have really dry skin maybe not showering as much I know that sounds weird but no definitely don't take multiple showers a day if you have oily skin try to optimize when you shower to go maybe after your workout or when you're most sweaty in the day and Take more baths. Baths are better for dry skin, I think. And also, you can add oils to your bath. I wouldn't add too many because I used to go a little bit overboard and clogged our drain. But if you Google how to, it's really easy to add oils to your bath. And that's kind of like an easy, for lazy people like me who don't like to moisturize, it's just an easy way to get moisturized skin while getting clean. Also, I know some people do not like baths because they don't feel clean. So maybe do a quick rinse in the shower and then jump in the bath with some like olive oil or something like that. That'll be good. Also, I'm going to try to not make this episode too long because my laptop is super, super hot. I'm outside of my garage because my house isn't quiet enough and I want you guys to have good, better quality audio. I know it's not perfect, but it's the best that I can do for right now. Um, but yeah, so I won't take up too much of you guys' time. The next one is drink green tea in the morning and before bed. Tea is honestly incredible. I'm more of a coffee person in the morning. It helps my digestion, if you know what I mean. Helps to get things flowing in my digestion system. And also it gives me, not energy, but it wakes me up. And it makes me feel like I have energy. Coffee doesn't give you energy. It just binds to receptors inside of your brain to make you... Sorry, I hear some noises. It just binds to receptors in your brain to block the tired signals from getting in there. So it doesn't give you energy, but it makes you feel more energized. So that's why I like coffee. 
It was a little bit of a tangent. The next one is no soda. Yeah, I think soda, if you like soda, that should be once a month maybe, or not once a month, once a week, like Fridays or something or Saturdays. My family, I, I never really was allowed to drink soda that much growing up, so I never really developed a taste for it. And now it's just, I don't like it. it if I do have it, once a month probably and alone like I can't even have it with a meal I feel too full so yeah soda it's just a lot of un extra unnecessary empty non-nutritious calories and also all the sugar in it I do love LaCroix and carbonated water though not with my meals but I just love them as a snack the next one is <laughs> also these emojis they're like there's nothing wrong with androids but their Android emojis and this for the ones for no soda and no sugar and a couple other ones are a girl covering her face and it just looks funny. But the next one was a no sugar. That's really important. Or not no sugar. No sugar. Sh I don't think you should be scared of sugar. Sugar, processed sugar is what you should be afraid of. I think sugar is fine for you, but in the form of fruits and stuff like People who stress about sugar in your fruit, I'm not. You just shouldn't be worried about that because there's so many nutrients that your body needs in fruit that you shouldn't even be worried about sugar in fruit. Also, thinking about fruit and going back to soda, orange juice. Like if it has as much sugar as soda, I'm not saying it's equal to soda. Like some documentaries and people say, since it has vitamin C, but and also other vitamins and nutrients, but. If you're trying to cut down on sugar, I don't, orange juice is not the way to go. Juices as well. I know, oh my God, I know a ton of people who don't drink soda, but they drink only juice. And that's just not, it's not health, the healthiest thing for you. I would advise if you love juice and you love soda, just have a carbonated water. It doesn't have to be LaCroix because it took me a while to like LaCroix. At first it's gross, but I feel like it grows in you. So a carbonated water with um, a sh like a shot of lemon juice. You don't have to peel a whole lemon and juice a whole lemon because I honestly find that just wasteful. I feel like the machines they use to package the fresh but concentrated little things of lemon juice are just better, easier, more economical, and they're not that expensive. So squeeze a little bit of lemon juice, lime juice, or whatever into carbonated water and that should help curb your soda or juice addiction and the next one is drink water oh also i just noticed a lot it's a lot not a lot separated um so that's a little bit funny drink water in the morning that's repetitive the next one is don't touch your face the oils clog the pores and cause acne this is also true, even though I'm the worst with it. Also, change your pillowcases. Pillowcases contribute to acne a lot, and I personally have to wash my pillowcases every week just to prevent that. So don't touch your face with your fingers and do not sleep on dirty pillowcases. The next one is take lukewarm or cold showers, showers with an A, can't be too hot capitalized can't be too hot and this is this is good this is also true cold showers and lukewarm showers are better for your skin but however um i know it's hard i personally cannot do cold showers maybe in the future i'll be able to but if you are going to take super hot showers like i like them once in a while because i feel super clean and just my muscles feel super relaxed after them first of all take a hot bath if that's the case with epsom salt but also if you're going to take a shower just limit the time that you're in the shower and that will help to eliminate some of the negative effects of hot water and warm water in your skin especially for dry skin it's not very good for dry skin oh my gosh my feedback is not on and so I was talking super loud. Hopefully, I just turned it on, and hopefully the audio is okay. Um, the next one is sour every day. S-A-W-O-R, sour every day. 
Mm, every other day. Okay, that's a good one. If you don't work out, I think showering every other day could be helpful and useful. However, if you run or it's summer or it's really hot where you live like me, um, I personally have to shower every single day. But that's just me. And in the winter, I don't have to shower as much because I'm not outside running. And it's just I'm not sweating as much because it's so cold. But I'll be moving to Florida soon. So that'd be so fun. I was just washing and cleaning out my closet and putting away all my coats and stuff, my winter coats and winter clothes. And it felt so good, yet so weird and uncanny to be putting all my stuff away, knowing that I won't be needing it this winter. It's the first winter ever that I won't be living in a place that gets below freezing and super duper cold. So that's really exciting. And hopefully I'm still doing this little podcast thing by then and I can chat about it. The next one is moisturize once out of the shower spelled wrong again, but it's okay. Um, Which kind of goes back into something that was already put earlier. The next one is no big meals after 5 p.m. And I love this one. I actually try to not eat big meals or meals period after before a certain time, before 10 a.m. And then after uh, after dinner, I used to do it after 5, but I'm going to be honest now. I just wait until sometimes my parents cook me dinner and I'll just won't, I'll brush my teeth after that so that I don't, I won't eat after that. But I think this goes into intermittent fasting, which I might do a whole episode on. But I'm in love with intermittent fasting. My mind feels clearer, feel healthier, because my digestive system will break. So yeah, intermittent fasting is awesome. The next, with exercise spelled wrong, it says exercise your face daily to help get rid of that double chin. <laughs> Chew some gum. Um, I don't, I don't know if there's scientific evidence to back the fact that exercising let me google that for you guys do you can face and you like this asmr can face exercises get rid of fat i do not think it can trust me i've i've googled this before um so it says that um there are exercises that will allegedly get rid of face fat However, it says the the fat in your face is a result of excess body fat and losing weight is pretty much what you have to do to um, get rid of that. Also, I think double, a little bit of a double chin is natural. I might get flack for saying that, but you shouldn't really be stressed with a double chin. If you look at almost everyone, almost everyone has some degree of a double chin. So I don't think you should be stressing about that. I think you should be worried more about being healthy and active and healthy from the inside because how you look, I mean, obviously if you have, I'm not going to talk about it, but that's probably a whole other episode. But anyway, exercising your face daily, I don't know about that, but definitely moving your body and exercising. I'm a huge proponent of that. It says keep your skincare routine in check. Yes. It also says wash your face in the morning and and evening. I think that's super important because it's first of all it's self care mentally. It just helps you to feel better. Um, also, just good for your skin, especially if you have an acne prone skin like me. There's gonna be no product that's cure all, cure all. I don't think so. I haven't found it yet. I'm always changing. I've tried really expensive stuff, really cheap stuff. Right now I'm doing CeraVe. I feel like I've always been scared of moisturizing products because the fact that I have acne and that's a result of, or I had, I don't really have it anymore, but I I have acne prone skin, I should say. And I felt like moisturizing would just make that worse and clog my pores. But that's not the case. Your skin actually, you probably know this, but your skin produces oil because when it doesn't have enough moisturization. So if you keep it moisturized, then it won't be compelled to produce excess oil. So I've been trying that. And let me look in a mirror. I f- my skin feels better. I still, I'm always a sweaty, I'm always a sweaty mess, especially in the summer, which hopefully that's not too bad moving to hot and sunny Florida. 
but my skin, it's, it's not perfect, it's not perfect, but there's still, if I go in there really close, there's still bumps and stuff, but anyway, you do not care, let me get on to the next point. The next one is keep them nails in check and them brows in line. Uh, yeah, I think it just goes into self-care, make sure my nails are cut so that there's not stuff under them, and uh, I don't really do much to my eyebrows, but sometimes I'll sh like cut the excess hairs that grow like below the arch and just make it look kind of weird. The next one is coconut oil is your bae when it comes to hygiene. Hair, nails, moisturizer, eyelash, eyelash spelled without in <laughs> two E's, brow growth, your bae, 10 emojis. I think that coconut oil is indeed amazing i have a weird story this summer i actually love coconut oil so much i used it for my hair my skin everything but um i was in a dorm this summer at a summer program that did not have air conditioning so i just leave it like on my dresser and by the end of the summer it was smelling so bad it was literally rotting so and that never happened to me at my house because at home in chicago i have an air conditioned house um, so yeah, just be aware of that if you're in an un-air un conditioned dorm or in a place that's hot Regardless, maybe put it in your fridge or something because coconut oil unlike a lot of other products don't have all those chemicals and preservatives to keep it keep it stable and not and keep it stable and basically dead but coconut oil in in a way is alive so it will rot so you have to be careful with that the last one, which is amazing, eat your fruits and veggies, especially avocado, spinach, watermelon, and raspberries. I think that's awesome. Again, I'm, I, I, I literally have zero listeners, but if Nutribullet wants to sponsor me, I love Nutribullets. They're so easy to get all your fruits and veggies in, and that's the one place I will drink juice. I put, some in the morning, sometimes I put I either put coconut water, which I do most of the time for the electrolytes, but sometimes when I want something a little sweet, I'll put orange juice and spinach and then a few fruits, and that just tastes amazing, and it's so good for you. And I'm probably going to have that now, honestly. So those are the tips from this probably nice ladies, um, this nice ladies freaking glow up list and i hope some of them were helpful and it was really funny so thank you so much for listening um i'm having a lot of fun making these and they're really therapeutic like 18 minutes just went by like that and also i feel like i'm getting smoother and i won't have to edit this one at all which is incredible so I'm not going to take up your time any longer. Half of you have already cut off right now. So have an amazing day. Thank you so much for listening. You you honestly do not know how much I appreciate it. Thank you so much. If you want, leave a review and comment, and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.